So I'm in the process of doing a more practical example. So when I hide everything, I have my base mesh. I have masked that part, and that is the part that I uh, the masked off around some geometry in the background. And I've added some fiber mesh that I first divided into subgroups by just doing that and then pressing Ctrl W. So you can create automatically polygroups if you go to your base mesh and make these separate polygroups, but I haven't. So I have created those polygroups after I had created the fibers. And I have some geometry in the background. And when I control shift click on that one, I've also used groom brushes like groom hair long. And first, sometimes it's a mess. I should not have made them into a hair ball. But anyway, once you get the hang of fiber mesh and know that the settings for fiber mesh are also applicable to the groom brushes, so I've preserved length. You have some forward propagation stiffness and especially front collision is also important because I am working with geometry in my background so I keep shaping it until I get something that I want switching over to the move brush it has some elasticity set to 7 smooth out and the smooth brush is at the moment at not front collision on now it does have front collision on so shape it and smooth it out and I'm gonna pull it closer to my underlying geometry, mask out that one, invert the mask, turn off polygroups, and I find that when you invert the mask immediately and then shrink the mask, it's more visible. Sharpen the mask, shrink it, sharpen it, shrink it, sharpen it. Invert the mask and move the tip closer together. Smooth it out and smooth it out. I'm going to clear the mask completely. So my shift brush has also the front collision detection on, so you see that everything gets smoothed out nicely on top of the geometry. A bit closer with the move brush, smaller brush size. And with the elasticity you still have a nice smooth follow-up. These are my first tests, so I hope that once I get better at it, it will go faster. But anyway, it seems to work for now. So we reverse the mask, shrink it, sharpen it, shrink it, sharpen it. Invert the mask, pull it back, pull the hairs together, smooth it out, clear the mask. 
you see you can really create nice clumps with a lot of control and again shrink and sharpen smooth out and when I do it from the top view in relation to the geometry my front collision will have an effect with the smooth brush turn on the mask smoothing so when you take the brush settings into account then working with fiber mesh comes a lot easier and a lot, a lot more controllable. And of course I can continue to fine-tune individual hairs that are a bit wacky, to say so. So and hide everything, hide my background mesh, hide, hide my inside my head, hide my background mesh. So you see when oh, I select the hair, if I select the okay. oh, those are the same poly group I believe. Shift F so I have done that. So all I have to do select this one, control W okay so hide those shift f and you see continuing like that you can create actually shapes around the background geometry and i can of course include that in the render and have that completely covered by hairs so that you don't have a hollow effect when rendering but as you can see, with the move brush and some elasticity, and then the techniques that I've shown you with the brush settings, and especially the front collision tolerance, you can create nice clumps any way you want. And the same goes for the groom brushes. So be cheap. They take into account the same settings, so it is important when using the groom brushes to open your brush palette and to check out the settings. And when working with background geometry, you see it's very powerful, a very powerful method to shape your hair. So if I do a quick render and I'm going to pause the video then for a moment. So I'm back, it has rendered, uh, there is something going on there that I don't particularly like, have to check out what the reason of that is, but as you can see, this is the first time that I can manipulate fiber, mesh fibers as uh, specific as as I've shown you, so maybe it's because of several hairs being too close together that you have like these big hairs. So I'm doing some smoothing. I'm 
But anyway, the most important part for now is that with the methods that I've shown you, that it's really great to shape your clumps. And that fiber mesh is actually very workable, much more than I realized before. Smooth it out, everything. Without the geometry in the background this time, so that my front collision detection is not doing anything. So I'm going to pause the video and render again. And again, I'm back. So this time it's a lot better. I did unhide the background geometry and smooth it out a bit and moved around again in different angles towards the background geometry. And of course, I don't have a texture right now on the hair. So with another texture and colors, it will look very different. So I'm going to stop the video for now here. Um, it was just a practical example to show you or to put into practice what I shown in the other videos. Hope you found it useful. Bye.